Hi, this is AP Calculus Notes Section 2.6, and what this is called is Related Rates. And with Related Rates, what we have to do is Implicit Differentiation. So start with this first one and do the Implicit Differentiation on this, and then I will also show you something a little bit different that I'll do with that. So pause and go ahead and do that. So we found dy dx. This is the derivative with respect to x, given 2x squared squared plus 3y squared minus 6x, and this is a product rule, is equal to negative 14. So when I do this, and we did not do this before, but I take the derivative of, 4x, uh, of 2x squared, I get 4x, and what we do is we have to chain off. Well, with the x, we don't really chain off because we are doing it with respect to x. But if we did, we would do dx dx, which just turns out to be 1. So we've been doing this all along. But we didn't just we just didn't know it. And then if I take the derivative of this one, this would be six y, and I have to chain off the y dy dx. And so and then this one's the product rule. Don't forget the product rule, please. And we finish that one off. So we chain off all the y's that we have, and then we solve for dy dx. What happens with this is that this is with respect to x. What we're going to be doing with related rates is we're going to be differentiating with respect to t. So if I see an x, I'm going to have to chain it off. And if I see any other variable besides the t, then I'm going to have to chain it off. So that's what we're doing here is the uh, related rates. And we do the same thing, and then as I just said. And then here's some examples of uh, rates of change with respect to t. da dt, what might that represent? dc dt, dv dt. Well, this would be the area and how it's changing with respect to time. This is the circumference and how it's changing with respect to time. This would be volume, this would be velocity. dv dt like this would be actually acceleration overall, but it would be the velocity, change in velocity with respect to time, and so on. Okay, so example one here. Uh, we have this here, and it says given x squared minus 3x, we want to drive with respect to time. So I'm going to have to take the derivative as I normally did, but I'm going to have to chain off everything with a uh, something over dt. So when I look at this, the derivative of y, I think dy, and normally we'd say dy dx, but in this case, dy dt is equal to, take the derivative of this one, 2x, but chain it off now, dx dt. And then this one would be minus 3 dx dt. So we're doing everything with respect to t, so we chain off the, all those things. Okay, then uh, we say that, now we can use this formula to figure some things out. It says find dy dt when x is equal to 3 and dx dt is equal to 2. This is simply plug and chug. So I go dy dt, this is for part B, is equal to 2, plug in the x, which is 3, and the dx dt, which is 2. This means that x is increasing at a rate of 2. And then uh, 3 dx dt would be times 2. So dy dt, how is y changing with respect to time, is going to be 12 minus 6, which would be 6. We would put units per time. I don't have units right now, but you would put units per time there. And then C says, using this same formula, I want to find dx dt when x is equal to 4 and dy dt is equal to 2. So you have to do a, just a substitution and a solve and plug those things in. I'll let you do If you haven't paused, go ahead and pause and do this. But I just plug in the values that I know, and then I solve for the dx dt. That's what I ended up with. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I will get a little bit more complicated. Some of it's the interpretation of the problems, but we'll figure it out. Let A be the area of the circle that is changing with respect to time. When the radius is 3, dr dt is, e is 4. Find dA dt at the time when the radius is 3. What we need is something that relates all these things together. So if I'm talking about a circle and I'm talking about the area, well, what relates the area with respect to the radius? Well, area is equal to pi r squared. That would be something that relates the area and the radius together. 
So that's going to be my uh, related equation, and then I do the related rates. So when I differentiate this, and this is where people start running into trouble a little bit, they look at this pi. This pi is a constant, so that just goes along for the ride. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t now. So this would be dA dt is equal to, as I said, this goes along for the ride. Take the derivative of this one, 2r, and don't forget to chain it off, dr dt. So this is how the area is changing with respect to time, and this one is how the radius is changing with respect to time. Uh, and do not plug these things in at the beginning. You have to wait until you differentiate to plug these in. So when the radius is 3, at the instance that the radius is 3, the RDT is 4. And so I can plug these things in. So dA dt is equal to pi times 2. My radius is 3 times dR dt, which would be 4. And then we can simplify that. That would be 6 times 4, 24 pi. What kind of units would I have on this? Well, this is how area is changing with respect to time. It doesn't ask for this, but I'm just going to put this so it would be units squared per your time unit. So it might be meters squared per seconds. All right. Now, here's the question. What happens if dr dt is negative? What does that mean? Well, if the dr dt is negative, that means that the radius is changing at a negative rate, and so it's getting smaller. So dr dt, I'm sorry, r is getting smaller. So that's that rate. And then moving on to example three, an isosceles triangle has a vertex angle that is changing at a rate of two radians per minute. And so I have to well, here's something that tells me how to relate these things together. So I do an isosceles triangle formula that relates uh, with respect to the two sides, and I need the angle, too. So an isosceles triangle, I'm going to draw it like this. That wasn't very straight. Let me fix it. So I have an isosceles triangle here. And so this side would be S, and this side would be S. This side would be changing. So this is like, I, I make the analogy, this is like alligator's mouth. That This thing keeps on opening up further and further, smaller and smaller, depending upon what d theta dt is. Now, to get the area formula for this triangle, what I need is the height, because I know that the area is equal to 1 half base times height. Well, I have the base. That's no problem. That's an S. So that's this one here. And then I need this height. Well, if I look at the relationship with this angle theta, I know that I can relate this height with this side in this right triangle. So all I do is I say, OK, the sine of theta, and I use sine because this is opposite and hypotenuse, is h over s. And if I want to solve for h, h is equal to, ooh, s probably wasn't a good choice for a variable there, but that's what I got. So h is equal to s times sine theta. So here's my h right here. I replace this in s times sine of theta. And then you get the area formula for an isosceles triangle. And what you got to realize, which ones of these are constants? If you do have a constant, you can plug it in straight away. Before, I said don't plug in things before you differentiate. Well, if it's a constant, it can save you a little bit because we, the constant's not changing. If we have quantities that are changing, then we do have to differentiate those things. So for instance, if this angle is opening and getting bigger and getting smaller, then this theta is changing. So I'm going to have to differentiate before I plug something in. But if I am given what this s is, then I can plug that in straight away, which makes things a little bit easier. So I'm going to do an area formula. This 13.2 is not changing. It's a constant. So I can plug it in. And then I got that squared. And then I'm going to multiply by the sine of theta. Then I want to differentiate this. So dA dt 
So in other words, this is my related equation, and I want to find the related rates equation here. So I differentiate with respect to t, and then this one I'm just going to keep as this. This is just a constant. 13.2 squared times the derivative of the sine is the cosine, and the theta is changing, and I need to chain this off, d theta dt. So there is my equation for my related rates. And then so at one particular time, when theta is equal to pi over 4, I want to know what the rate is. And so now I can plug this in. Oh, I need the area, though. OK, so let me regroup here. I need to find d a d t, and I need to know what d theta d t is. But it tells us d theta d t is changing at 2 radians per minute. And so that is my rate. So if I want to find d a d t, that's going to be equal to 1 half 13.2 quantity squared. This just came along for the ride. Cosine, now I can plug in this value, because I'm looking at that particular time. And then I have this times d theta dt, which is the 2 radians per minute. So I get this 2. So go ahead and calculate that value and see what we end up with. OK, so this is what I got. I got 123.206. should cover that up. And then I, do, I didn't have a particular length measurement here, so I just called it units. But it's units squared because it's area. So it's the area. How is the area changing with respect to t? It would be units squared per minute. I did give you the minutes. So that's how you would find that answer. So a couple things on there. Theta is always changing. You have to differentiate with respect to that. S is not changing, so you leave that as a constant. Big points right there. The most common mistakes, people will put this pi over 4 in straight away. And then all of a sudden, you got a derivative that's 0. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Only plug in values that are constant early. Otherwise, you have to do it after you differentiate. OK, example 4, we want to find the volume of a cone. If you recall what the volume of a cone is, that would be 1 third pi r squared times h. And here's my cone. And so here's the radius. And then I get the area of this thing, and it's going to be 1 third pi r squared times h. I'll probably have to do a little area explanation in class. Find the rate of change of the volume if dr dt is 2 inches per minute and h is equal to 3r when these situations arise. Well, I need a related equation. Well, this is my related equation because I'm doing the volume of a cone. And if I look at this, if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get a product rule here. R is changing, H is changing. But they give us a little hint, or reprieve, I should say. H is always equivalent to 3R. So if that's the case, if I can make this equation in terms of one variable, it just makes my life a lot easier so I don't have to do this product rule. So I do this. And then I have r squared, and I'm going to take out the h, and I'm going to replace it with 3r. There's my substitution. So my overall volume formula, oh, this turns out nice. Threes cancel, so I'm left with pi r cubed. So now when I differentiate with respect to t, I get dv dt is equal to pi times, pi is this constant, 3r dr dt. That's it. Well, that's a lot nicer than doing the product rule here. Now let's see what it's asking. It says they want the RDT, or find the find the rate of change of the volume. Sorry, find dv dt if the RDT is two inches per minute. So if I do this dv dt, let's see what we know. I got pi. Do I know the radius? Do I know the radius? Oh, they gave us to us here. So r is equal to six. And then dr dt is changing at 2 inches per minute. There it is. We just plugged it all in. And so I get 18 times 2, 36. So dv dt, I did that wrong. I would just get 36 pi. 
and then what kind of units would I put on that? Well, let me pause for a second. No, I didn't do this right. I hope you recognize my mistake here. I forgot to square that. Bad little mistake. So I get this value here, and so this would be overall 216 pi. Do I have units? Well, now it's volume. How does volume change it? And I got inches, so this would be inches cubed. That would be volume. And with respect to time, I have the time, I believe, in minutes. Yes. So it would be 216 pi inches cubed per minute. Now, I'll write this out, or I'll show you. I got another slide how to do this with the product rule and not substituting this in straight away to show you how difficult it is. So let me see if I got that right here. Yes. I got this one if you want to see the product rule. So if I do this, I group this side. And so this would be first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And if I look at this related equation, I can also get dh dt because now I got dh dt involved. So this is a lot more involved if you realize that. I, I think you do. And so now you just plug in all the things that you do know. And you got some information from this as well. And then you get this answer. So that's using the product rule. Here's the short way that we just did. These are old notes. And so it's just a lot cleaner if you can find something that relates in there to get things in terms of one variable. All right. I got a couple comments there at the bottom that you can look at. Uh, if you are look, working with a changing variable, you differentiate with respect to time and then plug in the values. Don't plug in the values too early. But if the variable is actually not a variable, it is a constant and always the same value, then you can plug it in straight away. Then differentiate. The first, mis the first one, if you violate that, that just puts you out of the problem. The second one, it's OK as long as at some point you, feel, you realize that the value is a constant, and so the rate of change would be 0, and it will just cancel some things out. All right, thank you very much. This is Related Rates.